Welcome everybody to the Alternative F1 podcast powered by Virgin Magazine. I'm Matthew Connell, joined as ever by Vondra Dixon, and we are so excited. Thanks to the thanks to W Series. We've got Emma Kimmelainen to join us today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, busy at the moment. Uh, it's it's important day tomorrow. Um, my daughter has a birthday, so mm. <laughs> it's always you know every every family person knows that that's that's pretty much everything you yeah. need to like put an effort and really show show what you got. <laughs> The, pr- the pressure is unreal. I've seen Dre um, being put to task many of time, putting on amazing pies for his family. So I can understand <laughs> the pressures that you go through. But Emma, we are going to get stuck into everything about life on track, off the track. But before we get started, we have to thank our podcast sponsors, Natural <laughs> Barber Company. It is free of synthetics, petrochemicals, and other harmful ingredients that harm and irritate sensitive skin. Even Gareth Bale of Tottenham Hotspur, yes, that is right, calls it his go-to hair product. So shop now, get 15% off, free next day UK delivery when you use the code ALTSPORT15. So guys and girls, let's get stuck into it. Emma, it has been the wildest few years, of course, for any sport, and especially the racing world, because you have to travel the world to do your job and enjoy what you do in W Series. And during this time, W Series announced an awesome partnership with Formula One, which is complete, which is going to be amazing. It gets it gets us fans to see yourself and your colleagues on a whole different level. What was the initial reaction for you when you heard about this partnership and what were those initial feelings? Yeah, well, obviously I was um, gladly surprised and, and really excited that we got this partnership. It's really important, especially for us drivers to, to be on a platform uh, that it's, you know, um, that platform in our, uh, in, in the racing world and, and showcase our talent there. So it's obviously a huge thing. So I'm um, presuming that there's, you know, some tracks that you, uh, you know, haven't raced at before, but is there any like tracks that are coming up that you're really looking forward to racing at, you know, that can tell, test your skill set more? Like which ones are the ones you that uh, catch your eye? Um, well, um, Spa, for example, is, is definitely a track, track that I want to race on. Uh, yeah, because it's, uh, I, I love always if, it, if, if the track is like, yeah. Uh, you know why and if, if it goes up and down a little bit and you know uh so spa is definitely one track that i i look forward to really much but then you know um any track basically i'm just really happy to get on driving <laughs> that's <laughs> true honestly you, you must be you must be chomping at the bit because obviously you've had a you know interrupted season last time and you know all of these all you know your preparations had to be different and you must really like because it's been taken away you must really like, appreciate just being able to get in the track and do what you love, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You can put it even better. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like that. Um, I am so excited. Last year it was canceled. Uh, so this, this year is going to be mega. So you must be excited to be able to go like, you know, obviously around, you get to travel all around the world. I'm so jealous. And, you know, it's, it's going to be, you're going to get to <laughs> all these amazing places. Do you actually get to visit some of the cities or towns and like take things in with your daughter or do you was it just like when you're there you just focused on on work yeah that's that's basically it so that uh, i don't actually uh bring anyone with me and at the moment we are not even allowed to so oh. uh we we travel in a in a corona bubble kind of uh things and then um it's not easy to travel at these times uh, you got to have sure. like many many different kind of documents with you <laughs> on yeah. saying that the you know negative tests here and there and doing paperwork here and there so um uh, and it's pretty much in any case it's like from the airport to the hotel from hotel to that track and then back to hotel and that that's pretty much it but then uh, i hope that in the end of the season when our last race is in mexico i hope that the situation is a little bit better then and then maybe i could have a little holiday yeah. after, the, after the last race uh, and uh, and hopefully having a, a, a big like a celebration then as, as well uh, because I, I, I really hope and aim to win the title so so that would be awesome. 
Mexico will be is a, is a stunning place as a track. And of course, it's very important to you. And of course, I saw in previous interviews, it's where you got engaged was in Mexico as well. So a lot of, um, yeah. lot of special, you know, Mexico is a special place. Away from the track, is it easy? Well, I, I think I know the answer because living in Finland looks incredible. But is it, one, easy to switch off from the racing world once you get back home? And I guess, secondly, from... Looking at, it, looking at your Instagram, I can obviously see as an athlete, you're also a lover of sport, whether it's snow sports, I see you training on the, on the punch bags as well. Do you have a sport that you feel that you're truly a fan of as well? Yeah, I definitely. Um, first of all, um, what was the first question? It was about living like, in Finland. Yeah. Is, about living jealous. In Finland. We're yeah. jealous. We're jealous. <laughs> Tell us. Yeah, it's been it's been amazing. I've done a lot of snow scooter uh, stuff and like sledding and uh, and, and pretty intense um, sports uh, when, when you do that. It's like motocross basically, and that's what I've done done the non now too when the snow uh, uh, melted. So it, it, it's been fun and um, and yeah, it's it's easy to um, to kind of like you ask that if it's easy to switch off when you come back from races. So yes and no depends how it ha- how it has went. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but I guess uh, because in W series it actually it's a big difference W series because we we drive um, as equals so that there is no politics involved there is no uh, financial anything anything like that involved it's only about the talent and we have the same cars. Uh, we have the the engineers and everything has been changing and all that so it's been so equal uh, so that actually takes a a lot of that pressure away that actually is in in many other series so Mm. um, I've noticed when driving in W series I'm actually uh, recovering a lot faster when I get home I'm already in the plane I'm already recovered in a way Um, and uh it's it's a huge thing to be honest and but yeah then um i'm i'm a really big sports lover as well and uh ice hockey ice hockey, the, that, a... ice hockey is that one sport that is really 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 close to my heart uh, i love to follow that uh, i love to see the games live and now I'm, i've been devastated that we haven't got the chance to go to go and see see any live action so that's what i'm really really hoping for and then of course motocross is so cool mm. and uh and and all yeah any kind of sports also boxing and, and all that so ignorant ignorant ice hockey question here because i feel like ice hockey is one of those sports where i actually appreciate what i see in the skill that is involved in it are there similarities like with European ice hockey to like, you know, what we see in NHL, you know, in NHL, um, I don't know. Is, is the hockey fight, is the hockey fight scene a thing that happens in, in Europe and Finnish hockey just as much as we see on YouTube clips in, you know, in the US? Uh, no, there's not, not too many fights. I, I, I don't think, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fighting thing is actually, we just, with a couple of friends, we thought about that, like, oh, yeah, it's how unusual, old right? is that really? Yeah. Yeah, it's all, yeah, it, and it's completely like um, unnecessary to be honest. It almost takes like, away from the this... sport, I guess, in a way, because it is you have to be so skilled. Like with any professional sport, you have to be so skilled to do yeah. it. And I think you know, it, I don't know if it, it is a shame that maybe a fraction of you know maybe like in, in on the other side of the coast, that's part of the entertainment. It's unusual, isn't it? It's a bit strange. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But yeah, hockey is like I like it because it's it's a fast, fast sport. So it's, you know, yeah. like everything is happening quickly and, and it's entertaining to watch. Um, but I also like to watch any kind of sport. Any, <laughs> so <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like uh, European football or, or actually whatever. So it's, I enjoy it. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a fellow sports nut like, like ourselves. Like, you know, there's complaints in, in my house in particular. is like, what sport do you not watch? Uh, you know, I think, I think we're the only ones we've, we, we've kind of, Matt and I have to get uh, more accustomed to is, is cricket. Uh, which is yeah. this summer we're going to be getting more accustomed to that but apart from that we're all with you we're, we're just sports junkies <laughs> just like yourself <laughs> yeah. um so you know you have many fellow Finns, uh you know in the formula one world which is amazing you know yeah. um yeah but as a formula one like sorry as a fellow driver um you know we'll be getting you're into Formula One on one day, like I'm, I'm championing you for that, definitely. But uh, you, uh, is there any other drivers that you actually look up to, or you, you, you like their style of, of, of driving that you, you, you know, 
that you effectively appreciate their driving style from a professional point of view? Yeah, I really appreciate Lewis Hamilton and his like mental strength. Um, he is, um, it's kind of, it's really admirable. And I feel like I, I have that same thing that no matter what happens in the race, it's just, you know, giving the boost, even though, you know, there are setbacks or something like that, he's still able to win. So he just comes from there and, you know, gets that extra boost and then he, he just uh, wins anyway. And, and I've always, that's, that has always been my strength as well. So uh, no matter what has happened during the race, I, I guess I've just been able to just click it off and, uh, and, and move forward and then just focus like fully on, on what's happening. Uh, and um, yeah, so I, I, you know, seven titles it's it's amazing yeah. <laughs> what can you yeah. say it's completely it's, it's really amazing but then one one i think is really unpre- like not appreciated but maybe but um hasn't got too much attention uh is nico hulkenberry he is actually really 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 big cult fans here yeah we agree we agree yeah no but he yeah he's he's really talented uh so and i i hope that he will get you know more more uh places to to or you know uh opportunities to show showcase his talent more and more uh but yeah and then obviously when i was a little kid um mika hakinen and then there was michael <laughs> schumacher and their their fights together and then then i i was obviously as a fan a mika hakinen fan but then i must say that i was so um i was i i i admired uh, Michael Schumacher because he was that he had that attitude you know that attitude that he wasn't apologizing to anyone he did everything he could just to be winning and uh, and and I felt the same like I could really relate uh, to that as I was you know willing to do anything and everything to, <laughs> to win so so um so that's why I looked up to him a lot well, I think what's really fascinating about the the Mika and um, Michael Schumacher battle is that Emma, we're pretty much almost the same age off by a few months. And of course, as we probably were introduced to the world of F1, that was one of the highlight rivalries, you know, of that of that era. So, you know, as a, as yourself being um, from Finland, of course, you must have been going crazy um, cheering that on. And of course, <laughs> you know, Nico, what, what a guy. And I think, like you said, maybe something you will probably appreciate more as being a, a racing driver is the ability to be able to jump in when he's been doing those super sub appearances and mm-hmm. just get back in there and be physically ready is adm- admirable because you know you know the demands that the ra- the racing drivers have and again lewis of course off the track um what an what an inspiration yeah. talented when he's you know behind the steering wheel and also you know a leader off the track as well so and that's something I wanted to come on to about yourself personally. Um, we've seen in previous interviews, you do a lot of things to keep yourself busy. That I don't think people um, get to know. And we've seen, we've, we've heard about you um, having business degrees, learning about sports management. You do on-screen stuff um, with media and, and yeah. you know, a complete different role to what you're doing. You know, how great is it to have those different things? And, you know, what, what do you enjoy the most? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, great to have those other things as well because it's kind of like uh, I do it uh, out of enjoyment uh, yeah. I feel that because um, I'm good at those things so why not and uh, it gives me joy so that's why I do them uh, obviously the the uh, racing and then being an athlete that's the most important thing in my life and then um, or you know uh, if we if we look at it in the professional view um but then at the same time i i think it's really important to do other things as well um it, it comes to it comes down to kind of like identity and yeah. what i what my <laughs> identity uh is and and um what i've learned uh in couple of years time uh or in the past was that uh no matter how passionate I am and how focused I am uh, out of racing. And that's what something I do and I love and, and I, I put like every, every effort in it, but then it's, it's not defining who I am as a person that I'm a lot more that I am. Uh, I'm also, you know, a mother and I have a family and I have uh, um, 
lots of friends and 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 other things as well that I do uh, that makes me feel good and and, uh, and and makes me appreciate myself and that's you know wanting to learn new things all the time and you know having that hunger for uh, for uh, kind of like more knowledge no matter what you do is is one of my kind of like uh, it belongs to my solid base kind of things uh, that I want to have in life. So that's why I do many things because um, it gives me kind of like the pressure off from the racing yeah. as well because I understand that I am still a lot of things even though I have racing or I don't. So uh, it gives me when I'm at the track um, and when I perform, um, I can enjoy it and not, you know, uh, letting it to define myself too much. So uh, that's what I've learned. It's admirable to you know to have those different skill sets. I think it's so important when you see any athlete or any any person, whether you you work in sport or not, to have different you know feathers in your cap and different layers to yeah. your 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 skill set. Um, because because sometimes what you'll find it probably helps benefit. Like I I could imagine from you doing on screen kind of presenting or punditry, that goes into helping you articulate a better interview. If like in this scenario now, you might be interviewed, but also after a racing career okay, well, you've lived and experienced it. You know the sacrifices, you you know, as a, as a parent doing your professional sport as well, there'll be valuable mm-hmm. advice to the, the next generation that might want to know that. How do I balance that if they, if they want to do that? So, I mean, you, you're, 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 you're far too busy, Emma, for our liking. And, you know, this is, this is why, you know, it's, it's great for us to be able to speak to, you know, drivers like yourself. I think that's the amazing thing about W Series everyone's got different backgrounds and you know that, that has been so fascinating to us as we've covered a sport for the last year and a bit um we we learned so much and you know we're very fortunate in that sense but emma we, we love to do a thing where we get to know um our guests a little better um it's we call this segment recommendations so we've asked different people from goodness me like jamie chadwick even anthony joshua stuff they like so i want to throw this question to you um and uh, you know, we want to hear your thoughts on this. So do you at the moment have a favorite TV series or like a movie, maybe documentary series that you're really into at the moment and that's got you completely hooked? Or maybe something you've just watched recently that you thought was amazing? Um, yeah, I'm hooked on the uh, uh, the F1 Drive to Survive. Uh, that's, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> also from Netflix, uh, Blacklist, amazing. Oh yeah, uh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. They really? have, um, yeah, they have many, many seasons. So, um, when you want to start to look at that, you you will get hooked. <laughs> uh, that's lovely. <laughs> mm, yeah. Uh, sometimes I, you know, it can be months and months and months when I don't watch yeah. anything, but then, uh, then suddenly I, I usually it's these deload weeks that I have right for example right now <laughs> that um that I'm getting you know a little recovery from a from a very um like high intensity uh, training period mm-hmm. and then I have like a week off so then when I don't have too much things to do because I cannot train so then, <laughs> then I'm watching Netflix, Netflix and then I get hooked uh on, on some series but uh but yeah I'd say track to survive. It's it's amazing. Yeah, that is a you know that's definitely one of our favorites. We've been absolutely hooked to that. And, you know, literally it was a blackout weekend when that came out. No one called me. I'm not here. I don't care what's <laughs> happened. We are watching this. Um, so, what yeah. an artist or podcast are you listening to that you think we should check out? An artist or a podcast? Uh, I don't actually listen to podcasts too much um because of probably the timing uh, yeah. but i listen to a lot of music and um what could be raced against the machine <laughs> oh, nice <laughs> that's, i've seen him, li- I've uh, seen that's... him li- have you ever seen him live that's the most important no, question no i haven't i have i haven't running oh, festival I, yeah maybe i have like it, it was the uh, race against the machine and then the cypress hill they they were wow, together that, that, uh, yeah. that i yeah That's that cool. i uh them i saw like a couple of years ago in a festival yes oh my goodness yeah see i i, I was so fortunate to be at reading festival i think it was maybe 2008 when they um came back and my my, my young teenage yeah. brain just <laughs> was blown away <laughs> 
<laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't think anyone understands like uh, as a as a fellow fan of Rage Against the Machine it's like you listen to the music now and the way they recorded that music it yeah. sounds like you could have recorded it yesterday it is unbe- unbelievably sounding so Dre shame on you you're missing out but Emma last question <laughs> last question on the, the recommendations um, segment I don't know if you have enough time so I I, I, I fear this answer because you're a busy person but is there a person or a social media account that you enjoy following and you like checking up on or that we, or, you know, maybe people like yourself should check out. Do you have time for social media? Maybe I, I yeah. guess you're a busy person. Yeah, I do. Cause it's, uh, it's sometimes part of my, my job as well. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, do you well, enjoy? I usually actually follow all my friends uh, or, or um, I live in that kind of a, <laughs> bubble uh, sometimes yeah i uh, daniel ricardo he oh uh, I, he he is funny <laughs> i i like his uh his instagram yeah and then he has these fellow uh australian friends uh i i what's his name um a i think he's a snowboarder or something like that and uh, mm-hmm. funny too <laughs> so um fun. Yeah, and, 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 and of it? course, uh, uh, alternative sport is this one of your favorites. Yeah, it's us, so. yeah, that's it. it's us yeah. now. Yeah. It's us next. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the guy. It's, it's always the Aussie, isn't it? Danny Rick is one of those never ending. Um, he's just so funny. I, I even saw like a an like an interview strand that he did with GQ, and it was just like he's such a good ambassador for anyone in motorsport because he is just a hilarious, hilarious guy. But anyway, yeah. Emma, as we as we um draw to a close um on this interview um. How are we doing preparation-wise um, for the W Series um, season that's coming up? Have you, in a sense, have you started your peak training and physical preparations yet, or do you wait kind of, do you wait closer to the races? Do you start a few months back? How how do you get yourselves now prepared now, even when you've had this weird year out with simulator racing and whatnot? Physically, how how where are you at at the moment? for you know come june we're going to be in france kicking it all off well i'm ready if Good. if someone would have wouldn't be ready it would be really they would get mm. really busy <laughs> uh obviously i've worked a lot and and uh, really hard for the past year uh to be able to be ready now, right now mm-hmm. uh, physically I'm, I'm really fit so um that's something that we've done really correctly with with my team and um, yeah, and then the racing point is, you know, you know, uh, I don't need that much time in the car. I'm really quickly yeah. in pace. So no matter what car you put under me, or if it's a, a snowmobile, or if it's a motocross cycle, or whatever, whatever it is, yeah. I get it really quickly. Uh, so um, right now, it's uh, within a week time we go to Wales, and uh, and then we have this preseason testing there uh, with nice. W Series, and we we get to drive. Uh, a lot so I'm looking forward to that one and then, <laughs> then I know that uh, that from the day one from the first session I am I'm fully at my own pace so uh, I'm not worried about the, the fact that I haven't been able to to race or, or do any any proper racing during the mm-hmm. year uh, I've had the artists before as well so yeah. you know <laughs> the talent never disappears so of it's course. only about the feeling and I have the time to get that feeling and I learned the cr- tracks really fast. So I'm not worried about it, uh, any of those things. I am just really excited and, and really going to love that moment when I get to drive uh, once again and see all the all the great people there. So looking yeah. forward to it. Well, Emma, we are so excited to see this partnership with W Series racing alongside Formula One. It's we, yeah. we cannot imagine the excitement that yourself and the fellow colleagues will have, you know, you know, wider broadcast recognition, more fans hopefully to um, perform in front of and whatnot. So we just want to say thank you so much. Good luck for this year and this season and beyond. Where can we find you on the social medias? Where can we follow you? People that might not be, you know, following you yet. What are the handles? Yeah, Instagram is probably the the place where I'm more more active, and that's Emma Kingelainen at Instagram, and then it's also Facebook uh, and then Twitter. But Instagram is the main the main channel where I put content every day on the stories and then and stuff. So. <laughs> 
But there we go. Keep keep track and you know catch up because Emma, you are one a very busy person. So we look forward <laughs> to seeing how this year unravels. Thank you so much for chatting to us here on the Alternative Apple Podcast. And we shall all see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for having me. Bye.